Hi everyone, I'm Emily. Welcome back to my channel, That Carnivore Life. I am so excited that you are here to join me today to talk about why I quit the gym, my eight reasons and my tips to get moving. Before we jump right in, if any of you know how to get rid of this shadow, please comment below. I would love to know. For those of you who are returning to my channel, you can see that my background is a little bit plain and a little different. I moved house last weekend and I have haven't set up my recording space. So for now, you get to stare at my beautiful face and my blank wall and my darling shadow. The other thing I'd like to say before jumping in is all of the content on my channel, none of it is medical advice. I am not medically trained. I have been on a health journey for the last 10 to 12 years with different autoimmune conditions and seen very many different specialists doctors, surgeons, dietitians, nutritionists, and naturopaths. So I've had a lot of on the job training and I have found my way to carnivore and it is transforming my health. And so I wanna share with you my journey in the hopes that you will be inspired and you will be able to find out what works for your health and to actually restore it, not just manage symptoms. And if you hear some background noise that sounds like a dog munching on a bone, you would be correct. I have inherited a gorgeous little schnauzer puppy, Reese. He actually belongs to my roommate and who isn't home right now. And so you're going to have some of his shenanigans in the background. Let's get to it. My eight reasons why I quit the gym. Number one, I'm lazy. If I think about going to the gym, it involves drive time, which puts wear and tear on my car and then the gas costs and it takes the time out of my day, like at least 10 minutes minutes drive there and 10 minutes back, there's 20 minutes I've just lost. Yes, I make phone calls. Yes, I listen to carnivore content, but I don't have a lot of time to spare in my day. And that's very annoying. The other thing that comes into me being lazy is if I'm going to exert myself, I want to do it on things that I enjoy in environments that give me pleasure. Honestly, a noisy gym just ain't it. So bye gym. My second reason is cost, but not really. See, the gym that I was at, it cost $23 a month, I believe it was. So that's actually not an awful lot. And for those of you who are confused with my accent, that $23 is USD, not Australian. I'm currently residing in the United States. That $23 enabled me to access anything at the gym, including tanning beds, saunas, aqua massage beds, and traditional mechanical massage chairs which every time I went, I made sure I used both types of massage and it was super helpful for my body. That alone, when you're going to the gym three times a week is a huge cost savings. However, thanks to COVID, finances are tight and we all have to make sacrifices. When I take into consideration all of my reasons for leaving the gym, the cost certainly came into consideration. The other thing that I would say is it's not often you find a gym that is that low in in price. Most of the other gyms that I have attended and especially the type of gym that I loved the most did cost a lot more. The one that I loved most was quite similar to CrossFit and it was $150 to $200 per month. And that is just right now, COVID, all of that, not affordable. And so cost definitely is a reason why I did and why I would quit the gym even 10 years from now. Number three, the gym is boring. Don't get me wrong. I love walking. So I love to get on a treadmill at a decent pace, not running, but not slow walking. And I love to have my AirPods in and listen to carnival content, listen to uplifting music, listen to something comedic. Shout out to, they probably won't watch this, but shout out to This Is Howie Bingham and, um, oh, I've forgotten the channel name. Uh, well, it's called um, The Gardener Cod Squad, uh, Quadruple the Kisses, um, Ashley and Tyson Gardner and their four quadruplet daughters who are now seven years old. I followed their journey since she was pregnant. I love to listen to that content. But honestly, when I compare walking on a treadmill to being outside and walking by a river, walking around a lake, walking amongst trees, walking up a low level mountain, I much prefer that. And the gym is certainly boring. I would rather be out in the sunshine getting my vitamin D than stuck 
in a sweaty, smelly gym with a whole lot of other people, clunking machines and all of that. Oh, and just another point, I'll pop it in here so I don't forget it because it's not in my notes. I have a little bit of PTSD from a car accident two years ago. I can be a little bit jumpy. So when some very muscly, very dedicated gym junkie man is pumping away at those weights and they drop down, I like fly out of my skin. My skin hurts like I'm being stabbed with needles. It is not pins and needles. It is not crawling skin. Very different, very uncomfortable. And I just don't want that in my life. So that's another consideration. But I do find the gym boring compared to walking outside. And quite honestly, I don't do much weights. I would rather have a pair of weights at home and save in the drive time. Reason number four for why I quit the gym, the TVs. I'm actually very fussy with the content that I watch on TV. To be honest, it's not fussy. It's actually guarding what I allow my mind and my eyes to see and what is absorbed into my my mind, really. There's just certain content on TV that I don't wanna watch. And quite honestly, I really don't watch TV anymore. I will watch movies and I will watch content on YouTube that is uplifting, encouraging, inspiring, and providing me teaching. But I'm not really a TV person anymore. So I would go to the gym and I would work on equipment that is all pointed at the TVs. That's where I spent most of my time. And even though I was listening to carnival content, YouTube uh, videos, even though I was listening to really inspiring, energetic music, I could still see what was on the TVs and the captions and I wasn't enjoying it and I wanted to switch the TVs off and I couldn't. And that was super challenging for me. I did not like that. And that is a big deciding factor in not going to the gym and ultimately canceling my membership and quitting the gym. Reason number five for quitting the gym, the environment just felt like I was being judged. Now, to be completely honest, most people at that gym probably weren't looking at me. And if they did, it was probably for like five seconds and 10 seconds. And if their judgment towards me was negative, that's actually a reflection on how they feel about their own life and themselves. Their insecurities actually doesn't really have anything to do with me. They're spending a whole of collective maybe two minutes thinking negative thoughts about me between all the people a collective two minutes. What's the point of worrying about that? But it just wasn't comfortable. I want to be enjoying my time if I'm exerting energy and I'd rather do that outside in the sun than in a place where potentially I'm being judged or I think I'm being judged. I just don't want to deal with that. My sixth reason for quitting the gym. Apparently losing weight is 80% what you eat and only like 20% of energy exertion. If that, it's actually a very small part of losing weight. So exercise, a small part of losing weight. If that's true, I don't want to spend my time in a building on equipment. I want to spend it out in nature. Reason number seven for quitting the gym. Apparently you can lose weight on carnivore without exercising. I don't know about you, that sounds incredibly attractive. And I want to test that theory. Just an example of this. If you don't know who Callie Hogan is, after you've finished watching my vlog, liking it, subscribing to my channel, selecting the bell notification to be notified of future uploads, shared it with at least one other person and jumped on over to my Instagram, thatcarnivorelife.gram and follow me there. Go look up Callie Hogan on YouTube, My Zero Carb Life. She is incredibly inspiring. Did you know that she she lost weight on carnivore without exercise. And when asked about exercise, she said, look, she might go down onto the, walk down the driveway and then sprint to the end of the block or court, whatever it is, cul-de-sac and sprint back a whole 30 seconds. I don't even think she does that every single day. That's 30 seconds. She doesn't have to drive to a building. She doesn't have to wear the appropriate clothes. Remember the drink bottle and the sweat towel and the key tag and all of that. She just walks out of her house, sprints up the road, sprints back, walks back inside and done. Now, I'm not going to sprint, but that's my kind of motivating exercise. 30, 60 seconds, done. I like that idea of intense exercise. If Callie Hogan can do it, I can do it. And I want to test that theory. And so that's what I'm doing. Okay, my final reason for quitting 
quitting the gym. Reason number eight. I believe in movement being enjoyable, not a task, not a punishment, not because we have to, not being forced. I believe in movement over exercise. And for me, the gym is a place you go, you force yourself to work. Yeah, you can enjoy it. Yeah, it brings endorphins, but there's other exercise, there's other forms of movement that for me are more enjoyable. And those eight reasons are why I quit the gym. Before I move on, I would also like to clarify something. I do believe that it is important to work with weights and that that is important for, I believe it's our bone health, it's our bone or muscle health or both. I can't remember which one, honestly. I'm not too concerned at this point that I can't remember which one. I just know that working with weights is important, but it actually doesn't require an hour of weight training six days a week. Not even 30 minutes of weight training six days a week. It actually doesn't require much weight training at all. Very little every day, actually. I'm not against exercise. I am for movement. Because I would like to test the theory that you can lose weight on carnivore without exercising. I'm choosing to move only when I want to and in ways that I want to, just in my normal everyday life, in my normal everyday activities. Most days of the week, I look after an infant. She's eight months old. She is absolutely adorable. We have so much fun together. And if you think about looking after a baby, you may not actually be aware. You spend a lot of time on the floor getting up and down. I'll be on the floor moving around with her. Sometimes I'll just shuffle my butt around the floor. Other times I'll crawl around with her. I've helped her learn to crawl. I've reached out suddenly to catch her when she falls. I'm then picking her up to change her diaper. Then I'm putting her back down. Then she's like messed her clothes. So I'm picking her up to put her on the table to change her clothes. Then putting her back down and then I'm standing her up. And then sometimes I might throw her above my head. And sometimes she sits on my belly and I'm kind of in a crunch mode. And we sort of just chat with each other and laugh. And then other times I'm bent over holding her hands, helping her practice to walk. And then I'm sticking her in a high chair, getting her out of a high chair, getting her food, running around the house, cleaning, making her bottles, all of this. And I make sure we get outside in the sunshine or in between rain and go for a walk, even if it's just 10 minutes, anywhere up to an hour. So I'm doing that as well. And then I put her in her swing. So there's all this incidental movement that happens in my everyday life most days of the week. There is a lot of stretching. There is a lot of contorting my body in different ways. There is a lot of squatting, crunching, weight bearing, but it's spread throughout the day. It's not like I've done 40 squats in 60 seconds. It's all spread out throughout the day. And I actually way prefer that. I had a car accident two years ago and I haven't been able to squat or kneel with my butt on my heels since I've been looking after this baby for the last two or three months, I've actually been able to now kneel with my butt on my heels and I've been able to get up easily off the floor without restriction in my ankle. And that is huge. But that's only happened in the last two to three months of an injury from a car accident two years ago. So to me, that shows how much benefit you can receive from incidental exercise and movement, not just at a gym. I also live in a two-story apartment. There's a lot of incidental exercise up and down the stairs or movement, incidental movement, however you want to say that. Sometimes I jog up the stairs, sometimes I jog down them, sometimes I drag my butt slowly up those stairs because I have to walk up them again. Sometimes I park further away from a store's entrance. Honestly, that one's pretty rarely. Usually I like to get the closest park because let's be honest, I am lazy a lot of the time. But sometimes I park further away way just to walk those few extra steps. I have three tips. If you're someone who isn't wanting to do the gym, isn't wanting to do hardcore exercise, and you want to get in movement in your body because moving our body is vital for our health. Here's my three tips. Tip number one, just move your body. Doesn't matter what it is. Move your body. Get up and down out of your chair a few extra times. Pause the TV to get the drink, then go sit back down. Pause the TV again to go to the bathroom. Don't just do the drink in the bathroom in one pause 
doors of the TV. Split them up so that you're actually moving more. Park further away, do those things. Just move your body. Tip number two to get moving. Do what you love. Walk in the sunshine. Walk up a hill that you might view as a mountain. Dance, kayak, cartwheel, handstand, jump on a trampoline, play with a baby. Just do what you love. Tip number three to get moving. Don't do it to punish yourself or to lose weight. Do it because you like that movement. Do it because it brings health to your body. Do it because it brings health to your mind. Do it because you want to do it. Now, yes, sometimes I do force myself to go on that walk. But I know it's something that I love and I know it's something that I enjoy and I know it's something that brings health to my body and I know it's something that I can see very quick results in and I know it's something not too strenuous even when I am tired and that's why I do it. But honestly, to push myself to go for a walk outside, it's very rare that I have to push myself to do that. I also really love cartwheels and yes, I can still do cartwheels. I can do several cartwheels and I never need to force myself to do a cartwheel. I love to do them and I actually do them quite often. Okay, now for a quick update on where I'm at with carnivore. So just as a quick recap, I went back to strict carnivore the Saturday after Thanksgiving. So day two after Thanksgiving. Then it hit Christmas and New Year's Eve, which is actually my birthday. And I ate a few things there too that weren't carnivore. As I got into January, there were a couple of times in the week that I would have something with sugar in it or something that wasn't carnivore. However, for the last week to two weeks, I flicked back into carnivore. I'm back strict on it. I haven't had any sugar. I haven't had any carbs. I've just been strict carnivore. I'm able to hear very clearly my body and what it wants. And I'm starting to see the improvements in my health. But from most of that time between two days after Thanksgiving and now the majority of the time I was carnivore, but there were a few days there that I had a couple of things that aren't carnivore as I've transitioned back and navigated the holiday season. What do I weigh? I don't really know. I threw away my scales. Now I have moved house and in that new house there are scales in my bathroom and I did jump on those scales the other day and I do know I have lost weight. I actually don't know how much and I'm not trying to remember. I know I've probably got it written down in a note somewhere. In fact, I know that I do and I could look it up, but I'm trying not to focus on the number of the scales. Why? Because they are deceiving and a lot of people on carnivore put weight on but they can see and you can see in their physical body that they've lost weight even though the scales say otherwise and so that's why I've decided I'm dropping the scales. I'll look at them from time to time but that's it. I can also see that my measurements are down. In a minute I'm going to jump up and stand in front. You'll see my whole body and I'm going to show you what I mean but I am wearing clothes that I haven't worn. I can fit into clothes that I have never worn. And that is amazing. Also, I'm still getting heartburn from time to time. And I think it's caffeine. Now I don't drink coffee. I'm not eating chocolate, but I do have a lot of black tea that I will put some heavy whipping cream in. And I actually have several of those a day because I really enjoy them. And I just don't want to give them up at this stage. So I have switched in the last two days to decaf tea. I still had a little bit of niggly. I wouldn't call it heartburn, but something still hanging on. On. And so I do think that that's the culprit. And so I'll be sticking to decaf tea from now on with the occasional Starbucks, which isn't decaf, but I love my Starbucks. I don't know why. I just do. So this video is far from perfect, but I wanted to give you an idea of how I'm going weight wise, what the changes that I'm seeing in my body on carnivore. First things first, the pants that I'm wearing, I'm going to show you a lower body shot in a minute. These are leggings. So it is holding me in a bit. They are Skechers leggings. I think they're the go walk version. I love them. They're super comfortable. I was wearing a size large and these are a size medium, which is super wonderful. This t-shirt, the hem is here. Two weeks ago, the hem was here. I have a longer t-shirt. Don't know how. Obviously, I've lost weight here, like here in my torso. And so instead of being stretched out and pulled up, it's able to hang loose. Also, it was very tight on my abdomen area and you can see now that it's like sticking out down here. It was up here and it was 
very tight. It was also incredibly tight across my bust here. And so that was quite restricting as I moved. The other thing that you can see, it's a little bit hard to see on here is that, I, well, there you go. I actually have space in my arm cuffs. A couple of weeks ago, that was quite tight. The things that I can see in my upper body is that my arms circumference have shrunk. My abdomen, waist, bust circumference has shrunk. The other thing, and you might see it if you go look at my previous vlogs, is my jawline, my face is so much less puffy and has way better shape. Okay, I told you these camera angles were bad. The lighting's also bad, but I really just wanted to show you my legs as well. But these are the Go Walk Sketches leggings. I absolutely love them. I wear them whenever I'm babysitting just so I have a lot more flexibility with movement. So when I move from size large to size medium, which are these, the waistband was uh, a little lower down and a little tighter. Now they sit higher up and they're also way more comfortable as far as the tight waistband is concerned and I've noticed in my abdomen here that it's a lot less puffy and it's a lot slimmer my stomach area my abdomen all the way down is a truckload flatter and then the other thing that I've noticed is that my thighs and my calves and my knees are looking a lot more slim I didn't really realize I just noticed it in the last few days. I'm like, oh my gosh, these look very different. So I just wanted to give you more of that attempt to give you that full body shot. So probably in another couple of weeks, I will do the same thing. Wear very similar clothes just so that you can see the difference carnivore is making on my body because I'm not doing the scales anymore. Thank you so much for joining in on this vlog today, for coming to my channel and looking at the content content that I have. I would love for you to support me through subscribing to my channel. Go watching some of my previous vlogs if you haven't already. Liking my vlogs and hitting the bell notification on my channel to be notified of my future uploads. But if also you're interested in snippets from my everyday life, jump on over to my Instagram, thatcarnivorelife.gram to follow along. Thank you and have a wonderful week. I will see you next weekend.